part of the Power Rangers family? I will say it's this. It really is. We need more fans. Yeah, we got <laughs> Testing, testing. Okay. It's connecting with you guys. I had no idea what any of this was about until long after I finished filming. And someone said, can you just do this con? You'll get to meet some fans in a few room. And then going there, and I just, oh, it just explained everything for me. And it explained the whole franchise and how special it is. And so all of you guys that make being a power of her. It really is. Especially because back then, there was no um, common avenue to go and meet all the fans. To meet a Power Ranger villain, it's like you had to go to a studio, and who could really do that, right? So, um, visiting all the cons and meeting all the fans that's one of the biggest highlights of all. So, maybe you could just real quick walk us through your character arcs, and I'm sure everyone knows, <laughs> but you know, for anyone watching at home, just you know, give us a quick rundown of you know your roles and, and the, the different versions that you guys appear in. Well, I played Rita Repulsa, and she was from the very beginning. Woo! From Woo! Oh, Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, but she came from the very beginning in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then um, from 94 to 2000, I kept coming back. So I would come help the villain out, come terrorize someone, or, you know, just there for some comic relief. But, um, I also did Zeo and Turbo, uh, Space and Ninja. I'm sure there's more. I can't remember now. And there's some more. <laughs> but yeah, so I was there from '94 to 2000. And my first day on set, I got to work with what? Oh my! I was terrified. <laughs> Between her and Hillary, Eva talks. I was mortified. But um, we didn't make it easy for you. <laughs> And trained to be evil by a clipboard <laughs> to serve Dark Spectre yes. and destroy the Power Rangers over and over again, or try. And then finally, um, I was turned back toward the good side and then came back in Lost Galaxy as the Pink Ranger to um, help out um, Larry Hendrix and take a step out. So, so good and bad. Which one's more fun? Is it more fun to play a good character or a bad character? Bad, of course. Bad, <laughs> no, that's fun. You get to do anything you want, really. Well, with that in mind, I heard Melody, you said before that your character, you didn't feel like you personally had a lot in common with, but what would you guys say, what do you identify with, and, and how are you different from the roles that you play? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think I, although I'm, Essentially, not like Rita, but there's some parts of her that has taught me to be um, more assertive in life and really um, don't let anything hold you back because Rita was one of those, I think, for the younger generation, for the female generation, she empowered little girls because she didn't take anything from nobody. It was like um, she had a thought and she went with it. And that's what she was going to go for. So I think, in that essence, that's what I like about it. I really enjoy it. Wow. Not to get all existential, but I feel like all of us have parts of ourselves that we don't necessarily love or things that we, I don't know, aren't so proud of in our past. At least I know I do. I have things that I've done and I've been, oh. And I think that's kind of what happened with Astrona Crow. She had sort of this part of her that she had to kind of accept and then learn from and go forward and, you know. But I think I am just kind of, I, <laughs> I think I'm very much like Crow. She's just, um, I don't know, a decent person. <laughs> I hope. So now time for a little bit of gossip. Which of the cast was wilder, and what are your best your best cast story that you could tell us? Well, I think Mighty Morphin was not as wild because it was 
the first time they, you know, the first time Ballet Rouge came out and they were testing the waters. Um, although we had fun, we had a great time because Rita had all these monsters and every time I came to work I had a new set of monsters to work with so the um, stunt people were crazy and we had a good time, especially during the wedding. It was, it was pretty crazy. Um, the other one was probably in space. You guys had a good time too. Yeah, well, we did have a good time. But I do have to say, and you probably agree, as villains, we spent so much of our time kind of in isolation. Yes. Shooting with the yeah. stunt guys and monsters right. and on a different set than the Power Rangers. So there's always two sets going on with the yeah. Power Rangers and the villains. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the antics are kind of around that. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> so you guys do have to do a lot of, there's a lot of action sequences, there's you know, a lot of costume changes. How do you manage all that? Uh, Melody, I know you have a background as a dancer. Was that something that you found helpful? Oh, definitely. Yeah, being a dancer was helpful because it, it made it so that you kind of fake some moves. But I did require a lot of training for the fight scenes. If you go back now knowing that I was an answer, you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's what's going on. Because I'm definitely not as sharp as some of the other fighters, but um, it was super helpful. There were a couple of accidents that no one, no one was totally harmed, like, irreparably harmed. <laughs> yeah, they had some good stuff. <laughs> Carla, did you manage with all the costumes? Oh, well, you know, luckily that costume, um, it was very heavy and cumbersome, so I didn't really have to do a lot of dirty work, especially because I had staff and I had, uh, you know, sorcerous powers. <laughs> but uh, the funny thing is, when I auditioned for it, it wasn't Power Rangers; it was a movie, and I had auditioned to be a martial artist because I was in Taekwondo at the time. And you know, I would have never known. I go for a Taekwondo role, and I come back as Blue Repulsa. <laughs> so. But she never really had to get her hands dirty. It was all just like powers. I'm trying to think, how would you do that with your with your get up? Right? How would you kind of you have to? That'd be hard. It'd have to be like in the waist up. Yeah. Pretty cool though. Yeah. Wish you had done maybe a scene like that. But yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> so what did you think of Elizabeth Banks? How did she do? Wow. I, okay, at first when I found out about the reboot, and then I um, read up on Elizabeth Banks, I just didn't, I didn't really see it at the time. I, well, I uh, know she was known for doing some sort of uh, out of the box type of characters, like in the movies. And at that point, I could kind of see it, but when she actually, when she was in the role, and I liked it, she took it in a different direction. She was a, a little, um, more menacing in a way. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was frightening. And um, the costume was completely different. It was more like you know, they had all the Iron Man type of stuff. But I liked it. I wish I had seen just a little hint of the old Rita in the costume. Mm -hmm. That would have been nice. But um, I appreciate it because they told me the background of Rita and how she was in Rachel, which I had not known that either. So I learned a lot from it. But all in all, I, I enjoyed it. I liked what she did. What did you think of the movie, Melody? I have a similar feeling about it. I do wish that there was more to be there. She was amazing. She really was. She was so scary. <laughs> Who else do you guys look up to as, as actors in general? why no one asks that you think is really interesting about the franchise, about your roles? I think I've, I've been asked so many that I'm going to take it back, you know? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. You guys are so smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys know everything. Oh. They ask a lot of questions. And there's some questions that I don't even know answers to, and they'll give me the answer. Oh, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people are so versed on Power Rangers, especially because Power Rangers has... I wouldn't say been around, but there was an extension 
when they start a super sentai in Japan. So there's just a history that um, I wish I could say I'm very versed in, but I'm, I'm learning a lot now that I go to visit cons. Yes, that's true. And I feel like the questions we get, this is total sidebar, but they're very thoughtful. They really are. Yeah. yeah. Very thoughtful. Well, maybe that's a, a good segue to open it up to some <laughs> questions. So now the pressure's on to do something thoughtful. <laughs> so, uh, thoughtful? Yeah, so who has a thoughtful so, question out there? This gentleman. Um, for Oh, do I need a mic? Well, yeah, why don't you give her the mic, then the mic. Do you want me to come down and do this one? Yeah, yeah. let's come right there. Yeah. Uh, for Rita, how did you come up with, like, how you were going to act as the character, like, for the voice and, you know, how you moved and everything? Like, was that something from the director or whatever of the episodes or something that you kind of came with, up uh, with? Oh, well, there's, um, okay, that, that's a good question. Um, that was a mixture of Super Sentai, where the Chico Soka originally came out. And then also that was um, the comedy that Saban, the director at the time, or the producer, and Shuki Lapia was saying, give her a little more humor. So it was a combination of both. And plus, you had to have the younger element to her because we became younger. So they didn't want to be, they wanted me to um, put that youthfulness in there. So I guess it was a combination of all that I came up with. And um, it seems to work. They enjoyed it. And and still some people to this day think that I'm actually Chico Masuka from the original Super <laughs> Sente. I was like, that is wonderful. That's a great compliment. And yeah, I just wish that um, I would have had opportunity at the time to meet her and go over these things with her. But um, at that time she was aging and she was still in Japan. And then um, that's the only thing I wish I had met her. But, you know, a few years later, um, maybe, well actually, not that, a lot later, about maybe 10 years ago, I think, 10 years ago. Oh, time flies, I'm sorry. I got to meet the actual crew that built the first they told me so many stories. The woman was just so into her character. There was this one funny bit about her is that she would go to work and she'd go to work from home in her whole costume. And she would ride the subway in Japan in her little getup. That's how, you know, dedicated she was. Do so. you know how old she was when she was here? At the time, I believe she was in her early, no, late 50s to early 60s. Or did she pass no, away? she passed away several years ago. I'm thinking it could be more, but I think it would be yeah. I really like her. I do this always. I go on the bus. I don't care. I go with like 10 years. You go like bus. that too? Yeah, every time. Every time. Every time I'm sure the bus driver knows me. That's how I am. I'm going, I mean the outfit yesterday. No, people something staying on the bus stop, stopping the car, making pictures for me. <laughs> when I stay on the bus stop, so I think I, I think so I meet her, I like her. Yeah, you probably love her. Yeah. And um, I like not to say something to this. Um, you know, I saw not much part. I mean, I have time since uh, Power Ranger. I like it not all about. I starting learning this when I spoke yesterday over this. What I like on this movie is on this series when I see parts. That's you, this time today is so many, before I got bullying too, I was so extreme bullying, extreme, not sure in the right way. I think with the Power Ranger, what you're doing, the wrong way, and the Power Ranger should know that's not the way it should oh, be. Yeah. It's the way you should be each other. Yeah. No matter what your nationality, what you are, where you live. And I think uh, what I, from this film, is going out. Just to try to young people growing up and learning the right way. But it's really hard for our parents today do the right way while around surrounding the community acting all this way. And when you try perfect, then they say, oh, you've been wrong. So and you know, that's the thing. Even the now, now that the children from back then, they're older, 
the, the fans have the best etiquette. They're so well-mannered. And it's a great thing because even though Power Rangers was um, a children's show and you know children are supposed to be hyper, it made them have good manners because the Power Rangers were these really good you know, teens. <laughs> so yeah, they show the other side. Yeah, First yeah. you make the bad stuff, mm -hmm. you like the bad, but the Power Ranger comes, no, no, no. You have to speak to this, but basically you have respect and find in a kind way. Yes. I say kind way is not perfect. In a kind way, do it next time perfect. You cannot the history fix of a learned future. Sure. And I think even on social media, I found that everyone is so kind. Even if they disagree with each other, you, there's not that kind of vitriol that you see elsewhere on social media. It's, it's amazing. I, I, I just have such a positive experience on my channels, you know, of free and free. It's like, oh, we're so lucky, you know. We really are. The fans are, the fan, whole fandom. I appreciate this greatly. And if either of you two want to go ride the light rail with me in full costume, would <laughs> <laughs> you imagine that would be so much fun? That's a show in itself. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to Melody for Astronema. It is such a great, has such a great story arc. Uh, especially like her childhood is very traumatic and like. You know, she obviously goes a very dark place, but she totally gets redeemed. And so that, to me, has been really personally meaningful. And so thank you so much. And then Carla... Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Not Nintendo. Um, and then Carla, mine's Lusty. <laughs> sorry. Um, so if you, like, you know, as Rita or as, um, like, a new character, what color Power Ranger would you want to be since you never got the chance to be one? Oh, my God. I've heard about this one before. Yeah. Um, well, if it's an existing color that's already a um, Power Ranger color, it will probably be uh, green or pink because you know, those are the people that they start out evil. <laughs> but if, if it's a new color, my favorite is eggplant. It's probably an eggplant purple Power Ranger. Did you wear your sweater? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, probably something. I'm plenty loud, All right. I promise. <laughs> I'm just curious, Rita, which is your favorite monster from Mighty Morphin that you would like to throw down when you're yes, What's your favorite monster? Oh, okay. Well, um, for me, I had a good, um, I really like the eye, eye monster because uh, for the wedding he has the funnest scenes, but I think the craziest monster I think is the first monster. I don't know, that's when Rita was, um, she was gonna put a spell on, I think it was something else, it wasn't the purse, but accidentally her staff fell, and it hit the purse that was sitting next to like the pink ranger or something. <laughs> and now comes this big giant pink purse monster. <laughs> And then you got you have the um, brick wall monster was pretty cool. Um, the pita monster, I like the pita monster. Anyone remember the pita monster? Like a pita, like a like a monster. Yeah, it was weird because Jason Dave, oh, I'm sorry, um, Tom uh, Oliver. Um, he had a stomachache, a really bad stomachache, and they found out that he was eating too much pitas, and then he had a pita monster in his stomach or something like that. But then the Peter Monster grew. That's the so um, those are a few of my favorite monsters. <laughs> so this question is for uh, Melody. Um, throughout the uh, Power Rangers series, uh, everyone was wearing their designated color that they were. Now, you were the first that didn't quite do that was the uh, the leather outfit, your decision, or was this the producers? Oh no, I didn't make those decisions. <laughs> oh, I had no, no decision making capability. <laughs> uh, no, I think it was just honoring kind of her character, you know, being astronomer, and then also honoring Hendrix. So as the Pink Ranger for Lost Galaxy, and, you know, I wasn't trying to replace her or fully embrace, you know, just my own sort of deal. Does that make sense? Yes, it oh, does, actually. Good. But no, I think it's 
No, no, no. <laughs> Bert makes perfect sense. Thank you. So this question is for both of you. So how did the franchise affect your acting careers? I feel like the franchise affected my mentality toward acting more than my acting career. Because after that, I was like, this is really fun, this acting thing. Maybe I'll just get on another show. <laughs> and, then, and, then I, and then I started going out in LA and I realized how incredibly hard it is and how how much grit is required to make it and how much um, risk and instability. Um, it was like the Power Rangers was a very safe place to be and it was so, my experience was really wonderful there. So, um, but I don't know that it affected my career. Not a lot of people knew about Power Rangers when I would go and audition. They would be like, were you, did you see your face? I was like, yeah, sometimes they see my face. So, um, I had a great time because Power Rangers was one of the first shows I had ever booked and uh, I didn't know about Power Rangers at the time. So when I had time off, I would audition, you know, um, a lot of the casting directors and booking agents were parents and they're like, oh, you play the villain. <laughs> so yeah, it, it made me appreciate that I was on such a great show, but for me it was a job, you know? So I, I knew that, especially in Hollywood, a lot of people weren't working. So as for me, for my, for my career, I try to stay on it as long as possible because it's hard to get a job as an actor. So um, it just made, as an actor, it makes you appreciate having those roles. Nadia, as a quick follow up, did you feel like you got her to just for um, both of you? Did you feel like that kind of passes you on? And you were not to say, like, no, 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 I'm tired. So, uh, did you feel like that, that was there when people were thinking of you as a villain at that point? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a yeah, good thing. I think I was, I'm typecasting a lot. Um, at the same time, I was on another show uh, called We Are Troopers, and I was casted as the evil android for Lord Sector. So I did that for a while until Rita got too big to know, so I had to quit that one. And then after that, um, especially now that I'm going around now, people are asking if I could play the Evil Queen or um, a villain, something like that. And we're even working on a show right now where I'm the psychic who has psychic abilities, and she, you don't know if she's evil or, or good. You know, it's a twist at the end, but. I don't know, but I think I, I would play a nice, sweet person. <laughs> <laughs> but it's less fun. Right? It's a public message. Yeah. Unbelievable. I think I was cast against type for Astronema, I'd say, pretty safely. <laughs> and I don't generally come off as a villain. Um, so then after the show, I didn't really, I don't think people really called me necessarily as a villain. So, yeah. <laughs> that was one time. <laughs> Hello, Carla. Hello, Melodies. Nice to see you. Hey, nice to see you again. Hi. Uh, I kind of asked this question to you, Carla, yesterday about uh, Mr. Robert Axelrod. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, for those of you who may not know, he sadly passed away about a month ago. And my question for both of you is if either of you had fond memories of working with him, either on set or at conventions, or what was he like as a person? I had 
him for 25 years. He's just the sweetest man, very loving. Um, you know, he was getting up in his years, but still, by all, he was everywhere. He traveled the whole country just to meet all the fans. Great guy. And very funny, because um, right before he passed, we had visited him in the hospital. And I don't know if you know um, Barbara Goodson. So we went to go visit him. And when we got to the hospital, the nurses all, oh wow, you have two women coming to visit you. He's all, yes, these are my wives. <laughs> and the hospital is a big scandal. <laughs> we went with it. So yeah, sweetest man. I actually only met him once, and it was not that long ago at a convention, and um, yeah, I can only just, just say what you said, which is he's a very kind, he was a very fun-loving, uh, easy-going, generous person, you know, just really uh, and fun, he's always up for a trip. <laughs> So with uh, like also seeing John come back to reprising his role as Jason and then like Jason and Frank coming back to playing Tommy, Tommy Oliver like constantly. Um, <laughs> if you guys were ever asked to come back for let's say some like reunion kind of a thing, like the villains all got back together for some reason, would both of you like ever come back to reprise your roles? Absolutely, I would be right there. No. <laughs> That would be very, very fun. Uh, Absolutely. I, 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 I hope they do that. Yeah, we should write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's write an email. <laughs> Maybe in uh, the Power Rangers 2 museum. <laughs> 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 I'm pressing my luck, though. I was, so, I felt so, I was so happy to go to me that we should, um, as far as Mighty Morphin, is have all the Mighty Morphin come back and film um, what, how the Power Rangers are today, like a movie of their life and how the Power Rangers, being a Power Ranger affected them. Uh, and Rita came back. And, uh, <laughs> no? Do you guys want to watch that? Yeah. yeah. Yes. That would be fun. And then you come and help. Power Rangers are there. <laughs> Maybe all your kids are Power Rangers. Is there a sisterhood of the Pink Power Rangers or something like that where you all get together with Katie Joe or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I know there are uh, a lot of us have kept in touch over the years, but there's no like, are you a Pink Ranger? <laughs> like, right. email me. Like, yeah, no. I think, but um, yeah, I think some strong friendships. When you go to one of the Power Morphicons or the Ranger Stop, sometimes they have all pink Ranger panel or their all villains. Yeah. They're pretty neat. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, so a couple years ago I was fortunate enough to meet Jason David Frank and he was my favorite um, arc of the series. What was your favorite arc of the both, both of the TV shows? Gosh, I feel so self-absorbed saying this. <laughs> it was a struggle, Spark. <laughs> and I think it's because that's the one I knew so well. I just, it was really exciting to be able to be good, to go to good, to learn and reflect on my past, and, and kind of come back and be able to redeem myself with the Rangers was, was such a such an exciting opportunity. I wasn't expecting, and I hate that that's my answer. But <laughs> I love I would say the same thing, similar, because I just know so much about it. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same thing, kind of, because you're right, we were so absorbed in it, and um, we knew 
from like the back of our hands. Now there's just so many um, different seasons. It's hard to really. Um, well, I guess I guess if you're looking at a different perspective, but um, I think probably Mighty Morphin and then in space and Zio. And I still have to catch up on the new generations. <laughs> what about you? Um, I liked uh, when they made the Green Ranger. Green Ranger, and, uh, well, I always liked uh, David and Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, um, they came out with the Green Ranger. And oh, yeah. So, I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an impressive one because he started out evil. Yeah. He could have stayed evil. Yeah. It could have been that. <laughs> that was good. Like I saw you wanted to get up. We can hear you, but I know I'm a loud boy. I'm a, I'm a skipper star. I guess we have a board musician. So, um, no, uh, the point is, um, I like the four color for your hat. Uh, who came up with the color? Who is the idea? Make it. Uh, you know, some you see all the old that maybe is made of metal. Silver, gold, or something. So, who had the idea of making your screen? Who came here with the colors? And all this stuff. Using so, who oh. came that up with a mixing color and decided what the color is the color? Yeah. Well, originally, the colors were already established from Super Sentai from um, Japan. But I heard a documentary from Saban, because he didn't really talk too much to us when we But, um, so Ron later said that they had the idea of putting the different um, ethnic group in the colors, yeah. um, in the U.S. version. So I don't think it was literal, but it just ended up that way because there's this sense of did they do that on purpose, <laughs> where they had the black on the black ranger and then they had the yellow on the Asian ranger and then they had the pink on the Caucasian ranger. I'm glad that it seems like as the series evolved, they started to mix that up a bit and change that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I did hear a rumor that um, they thought that was deliberate, but it wasn't. And that's what Savon said, that it wasn't deliberate, it just ended up being that way. But the colors, what you're saying, that was before Power Rangers. That was uh, started out in Super Sentai from Japan. So who came up with that? That's a something out there. Good question. I have to research that. One. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. On the mic over to you. Uh, you both did an amazing job in your own roles, but if you had to play a different role in the Power Ranger universe and you had to choose what one it would be, what role would you choose to play? But um, I've always wondered how it feels since I've been going to cons and uh, everyone's favorite ranger is the Green Ranger. I've always wondered how it felt to be him because everyone loves him. Even girls want to be him. So it's like, I wonder how that feels to just be liked by everyone because, you know, villains never really get any love. So. <laughs> I had to, I had to you uh, as the Green Ranger. hypnotize someone or, you know, to make him love me, but <laughs> give him some potion love spell <laughs> to make him love me. But yeah, I think probably the Green Ranger would be cool to, to see how that went. <laughs> um, so at the end of In Space, they both became purified and good. So my question is, what do you think they'd be doing in their new life? In their new life? Wow. I always 
thought that maybe Rita and Zed were like an old married grouchy couple. <laughs> Always yelling at each other and then one day they just had enough. And like Rita says, oh, that's it, I'm going to be bad again. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> that would be cool. I feel like I just stay put, hang out with my brother, you know, kind of cruising the universe. <laughs> So that's why we made this movie to, you know, <laughs> see them now. <laughs> so this one's for Rita. Um, if you read or pull that aside. You as a person and as a viewer of Power Rangers, who would you say is your favorite ranger of all time? Oh, wow. Um... <laughs> oh, gosh. Um... I would say the Red Ranger. Only because he, um... He wasn't the designated leader. Yeah, it wasn't, like, obvious that he was leader, but he just took over and you know, he wasn't afraid, he just he became the unspoken leader of the Power Rangers. Even though some people might still think it's uh, the Green Ranger. I guess I guess the Green Ranger in some episodes, but for the Mighty Morphin, I think it would be the uh, Red Ranger. You can answer that too if you want. Like this is answering your question, but I think for me in the story, I think of course it would be it would be Andros because of his sort of unfailing commitment to finding his sister, and I just that, that's a beautiful story, you know, like it, that mattered, and I think I don't know that just resonates with me. So. So you mentioned Mighty Morphin was your first role. Uh, when it became the phenomenon that it did, like it exploded, how did you take that, in, like that, that in, and like what was your experience when Power Rangers became so huge? Okay, so um, good question. So when I first uh, started playing Nita on Mighty Morphin, like I said before. I didn't really know what Power Rangers was. I heard of it because it was fairly new. And then when I first realized how big it was, was maybe like a year into filming. And um, maybe some of you remember, but out in LA, there was a big, huge traffic jam because the Power Rangers were at Universal and they were doing this live show. And the, the the traffic jam was like on all the news networks and it was crazy because you couldn't go onto the freeway because it was for miles and miles. And then that's when I realized, wow, my gosh, I'm on that show. I should be over there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that was the first time I realized how big of a show it was. And then the next day, my friend would call me, did you see what happened on the news? Like, yeah. And then, you know, sure enough, they're telling me, you don't realize how big Power Rangers is. All my nieces and nephews, and um, they love the Power Rangers. And it was just big, and then it just got even more big with all the mothers trying to take it off air because it was so violent. I mean, come on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was a very big deal. And um, I was really proud. It was just different for me because no one really recognized me because I had different, I had makeup on and uh, they put like, I don't know, maybe about five shades darker makeup on me so I, I look like a different race too. <laughs> so, um, but it was still fun, I was still proud of you. It was Power Rangers, you know? Till this day. I have a question. 
Oh, yeah. Hi. Any question for Carla? Why not? <laughs> so when you played your character, did, did doing that voice for like days at a time, I mean, was that hard on you, or did you, did you figure out a way to do it that it didn't tax your vocal voice? No, it was hard because when I first started out, I was um, playing her with that voice because for some reason I thought. Can we have an example of that voice? <laughs> oh goodness! Come on! What's wrong with you? <laughs> awesome. no, that voice was crazy. But yeah, it did tax. It put a tax on my voice for a long time. It was taxing, I could say. But um, then I realized that they were dubbing it um, not only in English but in so many languages. So I really didn't have to go all out. But the thing is, to play Rita, you have to because she's so animated and out there, there's no other way to play her. Yeah, you have to do it, no matter what, yeah. So, yeah, it was crazy. But after a while, you kind of learn, you adapt to it. Yeah. Are there any questions for Melody? <laughs> Melody, yes, okay. <laughs> transition from Astronema to Pink Ranger. That must have been like, I don't know, I just, I just don't know how it would have been if I had to go from a villain to a Power Ranger. To a normal person. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I did it for a short period of time, but it wasn't a Power Ranger. I just became, you know, you know husband and wife, I guess. Yeah, that's what I want to know. I don't know. You know what? It, um, I think the first episode, uh, Protect Your Quasar Saber, was a nice transition because I came in um, in disguise as astronomer. Um, and then through a fight scene, it was revealed that I was you know, still flying. And so it was kind of an easing into being the Pink Ranger. Um, and then the, being the Pink Ranger was so normal compared to being an astronomer. It was kind of a much easier, in terms of like a work day, it was much easier. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't difficult to transition from evil to good. <laughs> I think it would be harder if you had to I guess so, in some ways. Now, the other question is, did you know beforehand when you, when you um, that you eventually you're going to become the Pink Ranger. No, I know. That was a surprise. I was sitting at home watching Friends. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first reaction. I don't even know if I had a cell phone. It might have been like a landline. <laughs> They're like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> How did you feel about it? Oh my gosh, I was, I was, yeah, I was really excited. I didn't realize, well, that, um, that Valerie was sick. And that's, that's why that I had that opportunity. And thank God she's doing so well and everything's great and she's, she's awesome. But um, that was kind of a difficult moment. It was a bittersweet experience. Um, but I think they did a good job with it. And having her come back at the end. It, it all, we all had a happy ending with that. So. What did the cast think when they told them that you were going to be the cast? another thing. is like going on to set and being like, I know this is the best situation. But um, everyone was extremely kind and um, accommodating. Uh, yeah, it took a minute because everyone was, like, was scared. You know, it was kind of a scary situation with Valerie being sick. Uh, but they were so nice to me. So that's good. I think we have time for just one more. Okay, this time we got to hand up first. Um, so obviously, like Power Rangers was very, you know foundational for all of us and had a really big impact. What's a type of media that was really more like pop culture or something that had a lot of impact for players growing up? Yeah, friends, that's for sure. Friends. <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends. <laughs> friends was a big thing because we were around that, well we were our 20-somethings, but we were getting into those 30-somethings. They were like late 20s, early 30s, huh? Yeah, and um, Friends was a big thing back then, you know. We all wanted those type of friends, but we really didn't have those friends <laughs> inside it. Exactly. We yeah. had one of them or two. I had just moved to LA from San Diego and didn't have friends in LA. 
I was kind of trying to figure out what the what the acting scene was about, and this was before I came back as the Pink Ranger, and I literally have these memories of relying on friends to laugh, you know, or, or to feel better. I was, it was kind of a, a difficult transition for me, so I, I definitely understand the power of television, but you think, like, really, friends will save you? But it's, it's true, <laughs> and even back then, um, filming, I, I'm not sure if they have regulations, but back then they really didn't because it was a non-union show, so we were filming 15, 16 hours a day, so we had no friends, <laughs> and <laughs> friends were our friends. <laughs> So yeah, tell us just to, as a final question, what right, you're working on now and what's next for you? Oh wow, well, um, right now, I am doing a short film. It's funny how these things happen because now that I've been doing all the cons, people just come up to you, <laughs> you know, and doing a film, like I said, I was, I was playing a uh, psychic, um, that's a, uh, more like an independent film, but hopefully we're hoping for February or March, so we'll see what happens. Awesome. I actually am not acting right now. I work in public media for a nonprofit organization that is um, trying to increase economic intelligence to empower people to be able to take control and to make decisions and figure out, uh, to be able to suss out Truth from fiction in <laughs> today's world. That's so important. Yeah, it's exciting work. Yeah, so yeah it's so important. Hans out there, be careful. Well, thank you two so much. Let's give them a round of applause.